Hello, I just wanted to quickly check in and say a few words around being someone who's more sensitive or introverted and being seen, marketing, being visible, these kind of things, because I find this a bit of a confusion out there because I very often I see that, oh, if you're introverted, you do not like to, you know, uh, be visible so much or you don't like networking, you don't like, you know, having your face on social media and all that, which might be the case. But I would argue that it doesn't necessarily have to be your introversion and that I find introversion has become a bit of a term that um, gets thrown around as an, almost an excuse to do not certain things. And I want to change that <laughs> because I don't think that that is a term or like a label that should be used as an excuse to not do certain things. So first of all, we need to, you know, if you're introverted, it doesn't necessarily mean you're highly sensitive and react very strongly to, um, you know, the stimulation of a networking event or, you know, the emotional reaction you might have to being seen on, um, on social media or anywhere else in the press or whatever your thing is. That are already two different things. But let's say you're very sensitive and you might be introverted. Um, so your natural tendency is to, you know, have a lot of time for yourself, to only be around few people and to shy away maybe. And that's oh, I'm always already using the word shy, maybe avoiding things that are very stimulating. Like I said, could be people, could be, you know, just loud environments or um, anything that causes any reaction in you. That still does not necessarily mean you can't be visible or be out there in the world doing your work or doing your things or um, to even network. Because my what I've seen often is that people confuse a high sensitivity or an introversion with not having grown yourself strong enough to handle these things. Now, of course, you will get triggered if you're highly sensitive to these things, but at what point and which proportion is you shying away from feeling certain emotions, for example. Um, you know, is it that really the stimulation of that, let's say the networking environment, that the different people, um, you know, maybe the noise or the, the light or whatever it is that might you feel like might stimulate a lot too much? Or is it that you're not comfortable to presenting what you do um, to, you know, go in there and facing that um, possibility of being rejected for um, you know what you do or what you present yourself as or whatever you go in there same with let's say you're on social media you know is it really the stimulation of you know that how social media works and that dopamine kicks and um, or just having the reactions to you know the posts you will see just because you post something I mean unless it's scheduled um, or is that that you're not comfortable yet to face a potential judgment or rejection of people seeing your lovely face <laughs> or um, you know you speaking about the things that are meaningful to you um, which of course then we can change that and it's just something I really want to point out because I have seen and heard it from some very generally brilliant people out there that you know just because you're introverted usually often it's more often that people use the word introversion than sensitive to you don't like to do a Facebook Live or you do not like to network or you do not like to be on stage or whatever it is. And I really, really want to argue against that. I have not seen that to be true. Now, obviously, introversion is a spectrum, so you can be very much on one end of the spectrum. You can be much more in the middle. Most people will be somewhere in the middle and even fluctuate maybe, sometimes between some more extrovert tendency, introvert tendency. That doesn't necessarily mean you're an ambivert. I don't even know if we should use this term because that term then again would need to be applied to most people. Uh, it just means that you do a bit of both and it might be situational different. Again, like I said, it, it might be the case that these things, you really don't enjoy them. I mean, you're more energized by something else, but I just want to put this idea out there, especially if you feel it could be you, that do not confuse your, like I said, introversion or sensitivity with a fear of rejection. Um, you know, just simply being uncomfortable, being seen, being heard with shying away. I mean, I know, you know, there's a lot of talk, oh, introversion is not shyness, which it isn't. And yet, even if you argue against it, if you're some of these people like, oh, I'm introverted, but I'm not shy. Is that really so? 
And it's not even just China's. I mean, I'm talking about things that can go into things like codependency or like more strong things that might keep you from showing up at your best self and um, really don't care about the opinion of others, for example. Because, you know, you being free to live your life without caring about the expectations of others is a completely different thing than being an introvert or even being sensitive, even though these things very often go hand in hand because higher sensitivity, of course, means you might be more tuned to how other people react um, to, for example, what you put out there or how you show up. So if you feel like, I actually want to be more visible, but I have, you know, I shy away from it. Or if you don't go to networking events, ask yourself what is overwhelming you, first of all, especially with the latter, like which part of it you find overwhelming. Um, and is there a way you can do it anyway? Like, because I know introverts who are very good at going to, let's say, it doesn't have, networking is such a funky word. It could be just a gathering of people and you know they're interesting people and you would like to talk to these people because maybe you want to meet them or maybe you think you they might be interested in what you have to offer or whatever. Let's say that as networking. And, you know, there are many introverts I know of, I know personally, who will go in there, but with maybe they limit their time because they do know they get, so introverts and highly sensitive people, and they will get stimulated. Um, but they will still go in there for a certain time or say, okay, I'm going to speak to three people or maybe even better. If you know who's there, find out before who are the people you want to meet. Um, and you can have it very boundary and, and, you know, you don't have to give your energy leaking everywhere and, you know, it can still be very, I was about to say nourishing thing to do, but it is like, you know, meeting people is lovely and an introvert needs to do that as much as an extrovert. The only difference being the extrovert might do it just to get that energy, but the introvert might be a little bit more strategic to who they want to meet and why they want to meet and what they want to get out of the conversation. And why not? You know, it might even be a win-win for both sides. So just have a little look, like how are you in certain situations and do you use words like, oh, I'm so sensitive or I'm introverted. And again, I'm one of you. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but do you use these kind of labels to not do certain things and they become more like an excuse versus you know, they're really just strengths of the way you are and you do life according to those and you still do as much brilliant stuff in the world as someone who maybe identifies more as extroverted or less sensitive. As always, do let me know, um, share your own experiences. Would love to hear those and until next time, bye.